in electrophysiology, over the course of these past two decades, we've used multiple different energy sources to do catheter ablation, radio fibrillation. We started with radio frequency. We also now use cryoablation, laser ablation. But what's common with all these ablation energy sources is their thermal ablation, meaning they either heat up or cool tissue. And that's an indiscriminate way of ablating tissue, meaning if, the, if there's tissue there, that tissue will be ablated. Pulse field ablation is a little bit different. Instead of thermal ablation, it uses electroporation. So basically, you're applying electric fields in the tissue, and that punches holes in membranes. And what's interesting about this is that there is some important degree of tissue selectivity. So it turns out, based on both theoretical work as well as uh, clinical work and preclinical work, that you can actually ablate myocardial tissue without ablating adjacent tissue. And that's what's really interesting about this, is the potential safety profile of this. So it's a, it's a more selective, myocardial selective way of doing ablation. I mean, nothing is 100% selective, but it's pretty impressive. Well, in theory, pulse field ablation, the time it takes to do each ablation lesion is that. So it's very, very quick. So speed of procedure, and that's important. Number two, and again, the most important, is the safety, potential safety. Because if you can selectively ablate the myocardium without affecting the esophagus, the phrenic nerve, and other adjacent structures, then suddenly you have a more selective way of doing the ablation. And that's an incredible safety advantage. Um, and also potentially on the efficacy. If the field can be created in a more uniform way to make the procedure very simple for operators of various levels of expertise, then suddenly you make the procedure more uniform across the community. As with all novel technologies, there are challenges. And the two major questions, as with any technology, is, is it really safe? And number two, how effective is it really? The most recent clinical data that we, that we uh, just presented, where we looked at about 81 patients who underwent pulse field ablation, what we saw was, number one, the durability of isolation was remarkable. So all the patients, they had the procedure, and we brought them back at three months for a second procedure to look to see if the veins were still isolated. Because we know that with regular thermal ablation, some of those veins reconnect. But with pulse field ablation, using the optimized waveform in this trial, we had 100% durable isolation. We've never seen that with any technology in the past, which is remarkable. Number two, we did a number of safety assessments, looking at the esophagus, the phrenic nerve, looking at for potential pulmonary vein stenosis. All these things looked good. There was no evidence of pulmonary vein stenosis. There was no effect on the esophagus, which is, and we did this both by MR imaging of the chest as well as by endoscopy. Um, and there was no evidence of damage to the phrenic nerve in any of the patients. So all the safety data looks quite good. So now I do have to caution, this was two centers, three operators doing the procedure, still a relatively small number of patients, 80 patients, so we need to see this in a much larger study with a larger number of patients uh, with even longer follow-up. But uh, things look, at this, at this early stage, things look quite optimistic. So I think we have really good data in terms of durability of isolation, uh, meaning the effectiveness, and I think it's going to look good. Uh, I'd love to have more safety data, particularly with more operators. So I think it'll be important to do a much larger study with more operators to really understand the safety in, in, uh, in a large number of operators' hands. We also just need more patients. You know, we know what we know, and what we don't know is that there's something really unusual about pulse field ablation. We don't believe that's true. You know, pulse field ablation is used in clinical medicine and a lot of other fields in tumor biology and pulmonology are being used in pulmonology. So we don't really expect anything, but this is certainly something that we'd want to try to assess.